just fancy chatting to to people yeah. about chatting shit about music. About music, because I can talk a lot of yeah. shit <laughs> about music. <laughs> I'm exactly the same, man. Right, but same thing um, with Andy last week, right? I said to him, Andy, how did we actually meet? And came into this big thing, right? So I was actually thinking, how did I actually get to know yourself? And the only thing I can think of was we name drop Barry Freight was he when he done his Christmas single. Did we know each other before then, or is that kind of how we crossed paths? Possibly, I, I can't really actually remember because I, I know. I mean, obviously, I knew you when you played with Liam, so I came and watched Liam a couple See, of times. I, I don't remember. Right. I don't remember seeing you then. Uh, I don't think we'd. I mean, I don't think we'd ever kind of chatted other than just saying hello in passing, sort of thing. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm thinking it. The first time I kind of noticed yourself was when Barry done his Christmas yeah. single, and he obviously got all the different people from all the different backgrounds, yeah. and then he got the final single out. And you're right, right. Let's have a wee listen and see who's doing what line uh-huh. and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, right, who's this guy? This is Scott Ashworth. Right, he's releasing like songs like there's. There's like easy peasy. I was like, right, I better up my game, <laughs> <laughs> right? But uh, so we'll talk about uh, music you were into growing up. What yeah. kind of stuff you got into? How did you get into the guitar? I don't know. The good thing is I don't know much about yourself, mm-hmm. so I don't know if you played in bands previously. Uh, how did you get into the pub gigs? What do you think of the pub gigs? All that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then I know you've. We're, we're not going to talk about t- too much now, but. This magical album. Finished, now, now I've had finished. I've had talks with Barry about this because I've released at least four EPs, uh-huh. and every time I go over to to get the final mixes, I say, "How's uh, Scott's album coming on? It's nearly there. Yeah. It's nearly there." And I'm like, "Mate, this this is going to be something tremendous." Oh, it's uh, right. But we'll talk yeah, about that later, absolutely. right? So, first of all, growing up, I don't know much about you. Where did you actually grow up? Salford, Greater Manchester. Right, and see, growing up, how? Were you into music growing up as, yeah. a, as a wee kid? Yeah. And did that come from, like most people, their parents yeah, probably? Yeah, my dad. Yeah, so what, not my mum. But what kind of stuff was your dad kind of listening to that inf- you did probably didn't realise it, but was starting to influence oh, I mean, you? It's, it's stuff that I still listen to now. Oh, the so classics? It's, it's Credence. Uh, Credence bad, are brilliant. Bad eh? Company, Free, yeah. Small Faces, still my favourite That just sounds like my dad. Yeah. It's like, it's, you know, I don't know if it was just they're lucky that they grew up in that generation, yeah. but it was just... Classic band, classic band, yeah. classic song, all, all, everything you hear. I'll but, mention a band and my dad will be like, yeah, I've seen them in such and such, and be like, oh, I've seen them in the Marquee Club in London, and I'll be like... That's no fear. Nah. <laughs> Stones in Hyde Park 68, my dad was at that. All right, you're a bit like that. What's on at the SECC this yeah. weekend? <laughs> no. like Steps reunion, and yeah. right, that's not really my yeah. thing. S Club, nah, not for me. <laughs> right. So obviously you've you're got a good wee baser, even though you probably didn't know it mm-hmm. as, a, as a wee boy. Did you, similar to myself, was there a point where, like, like I'm in the car with my dad and I'm wee boys putting tapes in, and it's all the classics, like like you were saying there. They're influencing you, but you don't realise yeah. that they're influencing you. And then I, you become a teenager, and all of a sudden you start talking with your pals, and you, you all of a sudden kind of get your own musical influences. Did that happen by yourself? Yeah, well, for me, it happened when I went to high school. So my mu- music right. teacher at high school, my, my school was shite. I mean, it literally had no- <laughs> nothing going for it right. at all. It didn't even have a football team. Mm-hmm. But it had one really, really enthusiastic music t- music teacher. All right, okay. What was, had, what was their name? David Wharton. Yeah. And he had, he, he had a school big band. And he said to me, he went, you should play sax. That's quite cool, a teacher actually taking an, in- yeah. an interest. That sounds weird. Yeah. Because I think nowadays... It is quite like that, but back when I was at school, no, I mean, same. He was literally it was the crazy. Only one that teachers did it. D- didn't seem to, <laughs> yeah, take but, an and, and that one, that one discussion, him saying you should, you should learn sax, got me into the school big band, and then I had fourteen years in the RAF band playing sax for a living. So, so I didn't even have a school band. Did you not? We had nothing. We had a couple of broken acoustic guitars and a glockenspiel with, with bits missing. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean it, that was we punched well above our weight with the, with the school band, and we went down to. Like Royal, so, F- Royal Festival Hall and stuff like that and played down there. And so that, that's what got you interested mm-hmm. in music and actually playing music? Yeah. So when did you actually pick up, when did you think I want to pick up the, the guitar? What made you want to actually pick up the guitar? Much, much later. So I, I when I left the RAF in 2002, I put my sax away, never touched it. Right. And I played it pretty much every day since I was 11. So I was 30 then. And, and did you just fancy a change? Yeah, I just um, I just put it away and I wanted nothing to do with music for a while. Okay. Just had a complete break from music. Um, 
but it was you know it's always if it's in you it's in you and, mm -hmm. it's, and it's always kind of itching away so i went back to it a couple of times played with a couple of pub bands and stuff like that just still playing sax and then again put it away and never really touched it um you're getting sick and tired of doing baker street yeah and the simpsons <laughs> the same request every single time mate. yeah that one by hazel o'connor as well that everyone knows but and everyone's so genuine when they come up and ask for yeah. that request yeah like you've never heard I it know. before <laughs> you know what you should play <laughs> Uh, so I, so I mean, I just, yeah, I, I, I went th through kind of phases where I, I would get back into it, and then I'm, I just put it away and didn't touch <clears> it. <throat> yep. And then when I, when I stopped drinking, I really, I, oh, I bought a guitar. I, I had bought a guitar before I stopped drinking. With a so beat. did you buy your own first guitar? It wasn't yeah. like a present from. No, a no, I bought, I bought my own and right. thought I'm just going to learn. Do you remember where you got it from? Like what kind? Oh, it, was? it was a shitty stag. Ovation copy, yeah, um, with the round, strings about like, yeah, that yeah. far off the neck, bull, bull back, um, yeah, rub, absolute rubbish. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I, I bought a few songbooks that had the chords above the tunes, and, yep. and that was basically learnt a few chords from that. And so, you are you self-taught, or did you get lessons no, from just, anyone? No, just self-taught. So, at what age did you say you kind of picked the guitar up to start learning it? Uh, about 35, 36. That's quite late on. Mm -hmm. For when you think, yeah. like I, I kind of think now, that like I'd love to play play the piano, but as an adult, I've not got the patience mm -hmm. now to sit down and actually learn something. That's why I'm glad I learned the guitar yeah. when I was younger. So it's quite impressive to do that later. Yeah, I mean, I, I literally I was just strumming at home and, and what, what, what no. um, so what year is that roughly? So that would have been uh, two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight ish. So but you've got YouTube and all that by then. So. Uh, so you, I mean, you know how it's so easy yeah. to learn stuff now you just type on how learn how to play and it's there yeah that's i would say that's probably come on a little bit more in the last kind of 10 years or so so when i i literally just got some of the song books and and learned a few songs and learned the cards that way so pick up the guitar so have you been what age are you now 50 well, i'll be 52 in january so you've been playing it almost 20 years yeah i would say about yeah 18, 18 years or so. What about singing? I've what? always sang. So, so you've always yeah, sang? Yeah. Right. So you were singing before you were playing the guitar? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, so I sang in, in kind of... Just most people I know play the guitar. They're younger, they're playing bands and yeah. bits and pieces. And the ones that do sing, I don't know if they just... Re maybe maybe it's partly confidence or that, but they don't realise they've even got a voice until later on. Yeah. Or it's... Right, I'm playing in a band, nobody else wants to do it, I'll have to do it. We can you do it like yeah. that? Yeah, I see, I was, I was the other way, so I had sang in like function bands and soul bands and sang with big bands and stuff like that as well. And so how did, did you start any bands or were you usually just joining bands that already existed? Uh, most of them were joining bands that, that already existed and when, when I was in the RAF we had bands that kind of fell out of the main military band and stuff like that, so. And what sort, was it, when you, were you playing gigs, was it like proper like functions or yeah. was it like pub gigs? No, functions. Functions. Yeah. Do you miss that or do you no. prefer solo? No, I prefer solo stuff. Yeah. 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 So you got your first guitar, you self-taught yourself, which is pretty impressive. Already knew how to sing. Yeah. Already I'm feeling pretty inadequate. <laughs> <laughs> Sit in front of you, right? <laughs> so see for um, your pub gigs, when did you when did you start your when did you do your first solo Gig. Do right. you remember when that was? Yeah, yeah. Where it was? Oh, I, there's there's an event that kind of set me down that road. So right, go for I, it. I realised that I was that I wanted to get back into doing music mm -hmm. more regularly, sort of thing. So I, by that time, I'd probably. You know, Were you up in, uh, like in Denny yeah. at this point? Yeah. So yeah. I've been in Denny since 2002. So this was 20. This was 2013. Right. Okay. Um, and I thought, right, I'm gonna go out and try and join a band. Mm -hmm. um, see if there's any bands that need a singer. Yep. And I can, I can just about play guitar sort of thing at that point. Okay. Um, so I, I, uh, I went on a the website and I think it's called like Join My Band or Find Find a Band or something like mm -hmm. that. I can't remember the name. But so I've seen this advert and this this band were looking for a singer. So I sent a message, uh, said a little bit about me, and I got a reply back that said, um, "I'm really sorry, but <coughs> we're all like 18, 19." <laughs> And I think you're, and it didn't. They didn't know about it. I think you're way older than we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, right, okay. So I will scratch that one off. And then I saw another guy who was in, based in Denny, who was looking for somebody to form a duo with. Mm -hmm. So I messaged him, um, and we got together, played through a few songs, and, and it worked quite well. 
went to a few and then started going to a few open mic nights in Falkirk at like 20 Rocks and right okay and then Kilty Kangaroo in Stirling yeah went to through to a few of them and from that we got a couple of gigs and are you, were you doing rhythm and singing was the other guy doing like lead guitar he was, yeah he, so he was doing lead and backing vocals I was doing rhythm and, right, and lead okay. vocals um, and yeah and it, and it worked quite well but and see for it was, all, was it all cover songs yeah so how did, did you did you have all those songs in the bag before you met this guy or did you kind of have some of them you met up and you, did you practice yeah we, we, we rehearsed quite a lot before we went to the like the first open and did you just that. sort of have a guess like right, I'm going to try and get I don't know we'll try and get 30 songs yeah. or something like that Aye, we kind of just worked ourselves up a, Cause I've seen a like, set list I know guys that, that when they've done their first gig usually it's like 9 to 12 you know, we've only got 3 hours Yeah, and you're thinking I've only got like an hour and a, <laughs> hour and a half of songs yeah. and, and it was the same story every time just play the hour and a half by that point everyone's drunk yeah. then we'll just go back and play the hour and a half yeah. again and nobody will notice it and a, a lot of guys that seems to be how they started because three hours it's a long it's a, a, long a, it's a, a lot of songs to know yeah if you're not taking many breaks if any and you're not messing about in between songs yeah it's quite a shift to put mm-hmm. on I mean I, I I'm playing gigs now and uh, I can see myself over 40 songs quite easy yeah in, in the three hours so it's a lot of songs and, and you obviously want them all to sound good you can't have 10 that sound great and yeah, 10 exactly. that, that need a lot of practice yeah you know, so so you did quite a lot of practice yeah so we, we rehearsed loads I mean it was quite handy the fact that we were both in Denny um, rehearsed, rehearsed a lot and then we went and yeah as I said went and did a few open mics did a couple of gigs and then and it's real, I, I've never done an open mic right so I'm assuming you don't get paid for that it's just an opportunity to come along and try yeah. get up in front of people yeah. and play. I mean, we, you, you, you never normally get more than kind of three or four songs. Yeah. So you, and who out of the two years was the person to be like, right, I'm going to contact the pub? Well, Paul, the other guy, he he played a few open mics in the past, so he kind of knew where they a were. A couple of contacts yeah, already. So, so he knew like the likes of Adam Donaldson and stuff mm-hmm. like that, who ran the one at 20 Rocks and the one at Kilty Kangaroo. So wait, see your first gig as well. Did you already have... A PA, or did it was it amps that you took along? Or like, what was your setup? Uh, so Paul had all the PA and everything. So I literally was coming into this completely, so just like, I'm completely fresh. On lead. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, good I, to can go. do, I can sing. <laughs> that's it about it. Um, so that I think our first gig was in Sportsters in Falkirk. What's, so what's now? That again? That's now that XOXO, the old cinema. Right, right, okay. So next, next to the nightclub. Didn't club. know they'd done gigs. Yeah, they did. They used to have a dig gigs on Fridays for, for quite a while. Right. And Adam Donaldson used to run them. So he used to get like two two acts in on a Friday night and they'd do like an hour an hour each. And do you remember your feelings? See, see the first time you got up, say you'd done a couple of songs of that, Did were you just nervous, glad I got that over and done with it? Were you just loving it? Like I could give me another two, two Yeah, songs well, no, I, was, I was loving it. Mate. Yeah, yeah, loving it. Because it had been so long since I'd done anything musical that I was just it was just like getting back on the yeah on the horse really and what so. about was the other guy quite into it or like did you just part ways with it was it just yeah like, we did I mean really we, working at, at yeah some point? I think the the music that we both wanted to do ended up kind of being quite different it's a strange one though because see the amount of times people come up to me at gigs and they go oh, can you play this they'll name a, a song or a band and it's a brilliant song mm-hmm. or it's a brilliant band but you go so anyway, I can't, I can't play that because, first of all, nobody in the pub will probably know it. Yeah. Or, I mean, you're playing to entertain the pub. Yeah. Hence, you've got to play your Galway Girl and all your bog standard kind mm-hmm. of songs. You can maybe sneak one or two in now and again, but there's yeah. no point playing amazing songs that, that nobody knows. No. Because everybody just gets up and walks out to the next yeah. pub and then you're playing to an empty pub. But it's annoying because there's so many good songs and bands yeah, out there. Yeah, there is. So many times I get asked and I'm like, Honestly, mate, I love that song, yeah. but no, I, I can't play it because we've got 20 people in here and 19 of them don't yeah. know it. Oh, they'll come up and ask you with like 10 minutes of a gig to go. <laughs> and it's a great song, but it's a bit slow or a bit depressing and you can't, I can't play Or the that place now. is jumping and they want you to play one that's like a nice ballad yeah, yeah. or it's like the other way around. Yeah. You're like, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm knackered, I've just done Freebird, right? I need uh-huh. a wee rest. Let me play something <laughs> a, bit, a bit like slower or that. Yeah. So, uh, do you like playing the gigs? I love it, mate. Like I, I know you get paid for it and all that, but money aside, do you enjoy doing the solo gigs? Yeah, I really do. Right. Uh, like every everybody's going to have a gig where they're going. I'm not digging this tonight. So, 
if you turn, like I'm assuming you, you'll probably be similar to myself, you've got your kind of regular places, mm-hmm. and then you'll maybe, oh, try that place, you'll get a wee one-off gig, yeah. you'll probably go along, play the gig, check out what the vibe's like, you know, would I play here again? Yes, I know you'll decide when you're on driving home, yeah. sort of thing. But uh, what's one thing you love about gigs, and what's one thing you just that drives you up the wall? No, this is... One bit of that's really easy to answer, yep. especially as from, for somebody south of the border. The thing I like most about gigs is is that I, ju- I just genuinely love singing. Like, so, I, so I don't, I, yeah, I just I, that's why I don't I don't take a break when I do a three hour gig. I'll just batter mm-hmm. right through and. Well, I'm the same because yeah, it's like you take a fifteen minute break, you're standing by yourself. Yeah. Watching the clock, exactly. waiting to get back on. I might as well just do a couple of songs. And then you see, and you're seeing you see people that. leave. Yeah, as yeah. well so you quite often do that you know that's when i first started doing them i would take a break and then i was stood there watching and like oh, people are you're just losing people as soon as you take a break so i'd rather just batter on through and and part of that is because i just love it so much as well yeah. i just really enjoy it i've done one um setups before we were playing and the band or the other person that they're used to doing sets so it'd be like right we're doing two sets, one hour, 20 minutes yeah. or whatever, and we do a 15 minute break in the middle, mm-hmm. or we'll do three sets or that. And uh, and that's fine for some people. I'm just used to almost kind of just making it up as I go yeah, along. I'm the like, same. I, like I'll play normally for the three hours. If I need a break in the middle, or if, if I've made up people that have came along to see me, yeah. rather than just, you can't really speak to them, you maybe stop in the middle and have a wee 10 minute chat mm-hmm. or that. But I'm generally, I quite like just playing Right through as long as my voice is sounding okay yeah. and I'm and I'm up, I'm up for it, but it took a it took a while to to get used to playing or for singing for three hours. Yeah, I found because I'd I'd never sang before, only done backing vocals, and it wasn't until lockdown. Me and Liam were playing for like ten years together. Yeah, doing lead guitar. I'm doing the lead guitar and backing vocals, and then lockdown, everything fell apart for everybody, and uh, it was at that point I was like, you know what, I maybe just. I'll maybe just learn the rhythm of guitar and, and I'll, I think I can sing but I'd never really sang before yeah. once I started doing it oh actually I can do this got my confidence and all that and kind of just went for it but I remember when I first started and it was maybe I don't know anything about technique I was probably doing it wrong because I can remember it would get to like an hour and 20 minutes and my, my throat would start to go mm-hmm. and uh, I'm guessing just the more you do it the more you you, you forget you've got a microphone you don't need to shout yeah. because the microphone's there just pop, pop the volume up I think we just the more, the, more, the more you do it error. yeah the more you do it the more you kind of realise what works for you and what's, yeah. what the best way to manage your voice is do you get nerves of that no nah, not at all gigs because nah. I, I, I know some people some people really sh- struggle with uh, the nerves it sounds silly it's just a pub gig but You've got to have some nerves to get up to, oh, to enter a pub. Absolutely, mate. Drunk people. Yeah. Set up your stuff, and let's be honest, use the centre of attention. And uh, you know, it's great if it's a good gig, but you can get some bad gigs as well. Yeah. What you had any bad gigs that come to mind, or just? Yeah, I mean, just generally going back to the question you asked about the one thing I don't like, I, yeah. I don't like about gigging, and for me, it's the old firm. Yeah, the football thing. The football thing. I mean, I, I personally just avoid it. Yeah. Regardless of what I support, I just avoid anything football related yeah. because I, I can't be bothered with it. It's not worth a hassle. Yeah. But it's the thing, it's the fact that, you know, you can play a song that you think is completely innocent mm-hmm. and then somebody will come up and say, oh, that's a, that's a Celtic song or that's a Rangers song. It's not. Yeah. It's an Irish song or it's a Rod Stewart yeah, song. Yeah, I had or... one not too long ago. I think I played Dirty Old Town, mm-hmm. which is a great Irish folk song yeah no there might be celtic fans that sing it but it's not celtic related no but i had some i played it pub loved it had somebody come up after it and you went and played that you need to play a rangers song yeah mate that's not a celtic song but away you go and you know it's like you can't argue with a drunk person no you can't and it annoys me even more because especially with that song dirty old town because that's written about salford where i'm from yeah it's not an irish song at all it was written about a, a place in, in greater manchester I think it's that song, you know that song of Tell Me Ma? Uh huh. That's an English. Yeah. That, that originated in England somewhere. Yeah. As like a, chi- a children's, like, um, like a, a wee kid's tune. Mm hmm. And then I think at some point down the line, the Dubliners covered it. Yeah, well, I think the Dubliners and did they, the same with Dirty Old Town as well. Yeah, and then I think people just assume it's it's from them. Yeah. 
But, uh, but now you get tracks like Wagon Wheel that people think is a Celtic song. Wagon Wheel. And it's, I mean, yeah. That, that's, the, that's the new... Um, the new Wonderwall, isn't that's it? That's the new Brown Eyed Girl. Aye. <laughs> well, <laughs> Wonderwall was a new Brown Eyed Girl, and that's the thought. That's Every the single one. person I know. Yeah. They're like, right folks, I'm going to play Wagon Wheel when you, you see like the colour draining from their face, because yeah. they're like, I hate this song. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, it's an okay song. I just I don't know why it's such a big song, but no. it, it's weird because there's some songs that I learn and I'm like, this tune is brilliant. It's going to go down great. Yeah. You play it and it's like tumbleweed. There's like nobody's interest. Uh-huh. And then you play a song which I would class as just a filler. You know, I'll play this just because I need to fill five minutes. And it's like the place is jumping. Yeah. Like sometimes I, I can't figure no, it out. There's no rhyme or reason it, to it, it's is there? Strange. It's just it. But my, my personal favourite for for um, the annoying thing at gigs is when people get up to dance and they do it every time. It's always women. They get up, they turn around to their backs towards me and, they get closer and then and they closer. start walking yeah. backwards. <laughs> and then they get annoyed when you push them away when, yeah. when they're knocking all your stuff over. Yeah, knocking the microphone into your teeth. <laughs> the amount of times that's happened and I'm like, here we go yeah. again. I was like, I, I don't understand getting up Turning round and then walking backwards towards the person that's playing, and they've usually got a massive space as well. So and why the is, they're drawn to the you, microphone? And you do appreciate them getting up, <laughs> yeah. Because it only takes one person cheering, clapping, dancing. It can encourage the entire pub to kind of get yeah, up and definitely. do it. But I'm like, can you not just do it across the way rather than yeah. like this? <laughs> What's that all about? I, I don't get it. <laughs> and you can see it coming, and there's nothing you can do about it as well if you're halfway through a song. That's it. What do you think about the the music scene in Stirling? It's on. An, it's on and up again. It's. It's. it's I mean, the, the, certainly struggling after after lockdown. Yeah. But in general, because what I had said in the previous episode when I was speaking with Andy was when I started gigging in Stirling originally, there was only maybe maybe three main pubs mm-hmm. that done live music. There yeah. was the odd wee pub, Nicky Tams and stuff would do it as well. But the three main pubs was Dritty Neighbours, Number Two Baker Street. And it was O'Neill's, it's now Molly yeah. Mullins. But I was like, you, you go, and you would do other ones, but they, those were the three main ones. If you went into Stirling on a night out, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you wanted live music, you went to one of those yeah. bars. It's like everyone does live music now. Mm-hmm. It's almost to the point that there's, there's too many mm-hmm. places doing it because it, it's so watered down. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, though, a lot of the pubs are putting a lot of effort into it which is really good yeah. and I think it's maybe building to something that's going, that's going to lead to something really good And uh, but there's a lot I start to feel old because there's a lot of guys like I turn up you know when you're turning up and there's somebody just finishing yeah, yeah. You, you'll see them play the last couple of songs and they're like you do a wee bit of chit chat and they're like I know I'm at least 20 years older than you <laughs> 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 you're starting to feel a, like a bit older or you're thinking if I wasn't gigging in this pub, I probably wouldn't be in yeah. this pub because I'm at least 20 year older than everybody else yeah. in here. Yeah, it's when I'm stood there playing away and, I'll, and I'll, like, a crowd of young girls will come in and I start talking to myself disapprovingly about what they're wearing, going, oh, oh, oh. That's let, that's let my, yeah, it is, and I won't <laughs> let my kids out wearing that. Well, I, I'm panicking because my daughter's about to turn 18 at the start of next year, right. and then she's like, oh, well, come along to your gigs, and I'm thinking, this is just I'm just going no, not only got the pressure of the gig but I'm going to be alright who's looking at yeah. us yeah. <laughs> get, get hands off get, get angry don't buy a drink don't buy a drink <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah, we, yeah we're definitely bobbing on a bit now I know What? how busy are you with gigs because you, see, you seem pretty busy yeah I mean uh, do you have do you do the same amount each month are you uh, are you quite like every weekend yeah I'm pre- pretty much solid I yeah. mean every, every Friday Saturday I'd, I'd run Two different open mics, so that's that's like a Monday. Three, no, you've got yeah, the Monday so night one in Denny. Yeah, one at the Red House. So that's three three Mondays out of the month. I'm out doing. Yep. How's uh, that going? Uh, up and down, really. The 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 Red House one is it's good, and the locals have really taken it to heart. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'd probably like a few more musicians to come along to that one. I mean, Angie behind the bar's really good. Yeah, she's she, great. she seems to like really. Um, she likes the live music, yeah, help she does. promote it and stuff yeah, like that. Definitely. Where's the other ones? The other one is the settling, so that's every other every it's other one. It's one place I've never been. It's great, I love it in there. It's such a really kind of intimate little pub, but it's it's a proper locals pub, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 
they make everybody feel really, really well. It's like a, it looks like a cosy wee pub. Yeah, it is. You've got like the fire and all that. Yeah, playing. and the bit through the back is ideal for the open mic because it's like an old, um, it's almost like an old Nissan hut type thing. So it's it's got a kind of sloping roof and like a, a cave that runs through the back. Just an old old building yeah. basically. Yeah, and it's great. It's got a little stage and then kind of so rectangular seating. So at the open mic, so you get up to play a few just to start things off, or yeah. are you kind of just sort of bringing all the gear no well i bring all my gear and then mm -hmm. i'll play the first kind of three or four songs and then take it from there and get get folk up after me so another thing is on facebook i've got you on facebook so i see all your stuff and you know i, I make myself a cup of tea and i come back and you've wrote a new song yeah drives me up the wall because <laughs> <laughs> right, i was saying to barry it's like how come it's like every five minutes scott is able to write a song and it sounds bloody great i was like i wish i could write it as easy as that right but how do you What's your process for writing a song? I haven't really got one, to be honest. I mean, it's... Like, see, see the amount of times I'm out in the car, radio will be on or I'll be listening to, to a bit of music and I'll get a lyric or, or just, just one line. Just one line alone. I can write an entire song yeah. just based on that. Very, very rarely, though, does that ever turn into anything because generally I write the music first, hum a wee melody, in my head, which then turns into the words. I've got so hundreds and hundreds of songs written, just words with no music. Yeah, they, they, they don't ever seem to turn in it, turn into anything. I always do the music first. Right, I see. I tend and, to be the other way around. Right, and more more often than not, I'll write my lyrics and then and then add the music to it. I'll come up with a melody. So afterwards. you're a wee bit like your Elton John, where he used yeah. to get the I can't who the Bernie Taupin. Yeah, yeah, he would just hand them the lyrics, yeah. and then he'd come up with something. Yeah, and it was a generally a hit. So that, that's. So like you said though, it's usually just an idea or a line and then I'll just work from there. Yeah, and, and, and write the it's song funny though because it might be one wee line in a song mm -hmm. and what you write has got absolutely nothing at all to do with what the subject matter was yeah. of the other song. But it's just, I don't know, my, my dad used to always ask me like, he, he didn't, he loved music but he didn't play. So he was always like, I don't understand how you can just create a song from nothing, mm -hmm. <clears throat> right? But at the same time, he 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 was he did painting. So I'm like, well, how can you buy a blank canvas? Yeah. And then five days later, you've got you know a whole picture. Yeah. Done. It's the same thing. Yeah, it is. And I can't do that. <clears throat> yeah. And and, and you you ask five painters, how did you paint that picture? They're all doing it differently. Yeah. Right. But it, it's just uh, it's weird how every everybody does it slightly different. Yeah. But it's weird how. I mean, do you think, I think most of your songs, I'm going to just take a guess here, most of them come out pretty quickly, but would I be wrong? No, most, no. Of, most of them do. <clears throat> do you, have you got songs though that you have worked on? Yeah. Like, like you know, I'll put it on the back burner, I'm just not feeling it now. Yeah. And, and then you'll come back to it, but most of them look like they come out quite quick. Well, yeah, most of them tend to come out in a one -off. I mean, you know, I've got songs that have that are on this, the album and stuff like that, or that I've released as singles that have come out in 10 minutes and mm -hmm. and then I've, I've read it afterwards and gone, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, I thought then I've got other ones where, like you say, you know, they've been sitting there, I've had maybe a verse and a chorus, but I've just not mm -hmm. been able to finish them. I remember seeing Kelly Jones um, getting interviewed one time and he said that the amount of songs that he's got now, finished songs, that are like three, three different songs put together where he's yeah. written a bit of one song, written another one. And eventually mm -hmm. he's, he's actually looked at more and gone, actually, that really fits with that. Yeah. And this one, this bit would fit in as well. That would be a perfect bridge from there that would slot into that. So I've, I've got a few like that, but yeah, majority, like you say, re come relatively quickly. Right, that's quite cool. So I had a wee look on um, like iTunes, stuff like that. So I'm yeah. going to go down what I found for you. There mm -hmm. might be other stuff that I've missed, right? So 2017, yeah. 21st of August. Drifting Away EP. Yeah. Right? It's got four songs on it, right? Running From Tomorrow, which I really liked. Drifting Away, Happy Man, Beside Me, mm -hmm. right? So that's just, <clears throat> those four of them, it's just acoustic guitar yeah. and vocals, right? To me, it totally reminded me of, see when you used to hear, see when Noel Gallagher used to do a stripped back version of Oasis song, just... Yeah. That's kind of, that was the sort of feel it had, mm -hmm. that kind of, a wee bit of R.E.M. kind of thing. Yeah. Quite liked it, right? Um, where was that recorded? So they all, they, that recording came from uh, a songwriters competition in Falkirk that <coughs> Adam Donaldson and Robbie Lessiuk used to run at uh, 
North Star Ray Rialtos. Right, okay. Um, every every July, so they just used to have like uh, just local musicians. Yeah, apply so they, for it. Anybody, sort of thing. Any, well, anybody could rock up at one of the. Used to have like six um, six different nights where people could could rock up and play right, okay. three songs. But Robbie always recorded them. So he recorded them through the desk, and then at the end of it, he just done a just, quick mix kind yeah, of thing, quick, quick, dirty mix, and sounds, then sounds really good. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's great. It's, <coughs> Don't get me wrong; it's guitar and vocals, yeah. so it's not too difficult to mix, which yeah. is good though. But it sounds brilliant. But I, I mean, you know, it was perfect because I didn't have just to have something as an online presence at that point was was useful. Was so. that the first thing you released? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I noticed you must have been working hard, right? Because it took you a whole year to release. Live and unplugged EP. Yeah. Right, that tenth of August two thousand and eighteen. Well, that came from the same thing the following year. So I was so going to ask you, where was it recorded? Because you can hear a, a, crowd, a crowd in the background. Noise. Yeah. So was that recorded the exact same? Exact place? same thing. Yeah. So was it just at the first one? There was no crowd mic. Uh, was it, it just have, a direct yeah, plug into been. the desk? Yeah, I think so. And then this one had obviously a couple of mics. Yeah. Set either up. that, or there was nobody at the first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, do you remember that band, Baby Bird? Yeah. That kind, it kind of reminded me a wee bit. See when you're kind of like playing the verses, and it's almost like you're because all your songs are very like storytelling, mm-hmm. but you can follow the story. It's not all over the place. Yeah, right. It, sound, it reminded me a wee bit of that, like because it's more like a sort of talking, telling the story. At the the verse and then the chorus comes in. It's a bit more catchy. Yeah. and singing. Um, but that's cool. So all, those two first EPs were at the same place. Yeah. You've then got the letter single, yep. released 1st of September 2021, so you must have slacked off for a few years yeah. and, and uh, decided, right, I'm going to really start practising, <laughs> right? But that's acoustic guitar and vocals. Yeah. Who's playing the lead guitar? Is that yourself? No, that's Barry. Was that Barry? Yeah, Barry so Frame was, on so that was that one. Barry that recorded that so one? That was the first thing I recorded with Barry. <coughs> um, so you've done, recently you've done a lot of recording with Barry, so how did you come across Barry? And I knew his name. Because yep. he's, he's another Denny musician, so I kind of I knew of him. But then my eldest daughter started going to guitar lessons with Barry. Right, okay. So I kind of got to know him through that, and, and then yeah, the friendship, you friendship to developed. The, the and Baza's man cave. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, that, so that's Barry playing lead guitar. It is. The other thing I'd noticed was there's vocal harmonies. Was that the first time you tried you'd done that on a recording? Yeah. And how did you find that? Was it, did it come relatively easy? Because yeah. some people can't do that. I love harmonising. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I... I, I love doing it, I just can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I generally, if I'm driving in the car, I won't sing the melody. I'll sing harmonies with, with whatever's on the radio or whatever I'm listening right. to. So, yeah. Right, that's cool. Right, so, moving forward, right, we've got Never See Colour Again single. Yeah. So that was released 22nd of June, right, 2022. And that's a full band now, so... I feel like there's a new sound for you, kind of developing. Is that still Barry? Barry's recorded yeah. that? Yeah, so... So who's on all the different instruments? Because there sounded like there was drums, guitar, bass, keyboard type kind of thing. Horns. Yeah. Uh, so this is, these ones that followed from, from Never See Colour Again, everything that came out after that, from there on, was, are, are they're all album tracks, so... All right, for this up and coming yeah. album. Yeah. But So this will be actually on it. Yeah, that's the opening right. track on the album, yeah. Because I, I took a wee note, I like to try and think, right, who does this sound like? I even said to, to Alison before I came out, listen to this, who do you think? So both agree it's, it's got a 70s feel to mm-hmm. it. Joe Cocker yeah. just sounds like something kind of similar to that. Like a really cool, I don't know what, it, it's that, um, there's a sound on the keys that they do. It's not a piano or anything, I don't know what the sound is, but it's just, it sounds great. Well, um, that one... Again, you know, like you, you know, you know yourself. We we write all these songs with just vocals and acoustic, and then mm-hmm. with the, more often than not, the first few times we play them, it's just vocals and acoustic. Yeah. But then with that song, every time I played it in my head, I heard the arrangement getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And I and I and I envisaged it as like a a big Muscle Shoals seventies kind of almost Leonard Skinner kind mm-hmm. of Holman Brothers yep. that, that <clears throat> Southern rock kind of sound. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I heard it with some big wailing lead guitar on it and horns and uh, and I thought that's that's if I if we do the album that's how I want it to sound so and you're just like Barry I want you to get those fingers stretched yeah absolutely and ready yeah because so, you're about to start shredding yeah well he's not playing lead on that one so that's right, a, that's okay. a mate of mine from Glasgow called John Elliott who's playing lead on that mm-hmm. um and how do you know John just through uh kind of open mics and songwriters, and stuff like that. songwriters nights through in Glasgow yeah sounding good 
Pity Clown. I downloaded this one because I like this one. Yeah. That was 22nd of February that one came out. It's full band again. Yeah. Is it the same, similar previous one? It is, yep. Yeah. So right. it's uh, Dave Campbell on drums, um, Ian Donald on bass, and. Ian Donald, I know Ian. Yeah. Yep. So another mainstay of the local music scene, really. He's um, some fella. He is, yeah. That's right. <laughs> I always remember meeting him, right? It's like normally guys will come into the pub and, uh, all right, mate, how's it going? And they'll, they'll, they'll just come up, introduce themselves, shake your hand, you know, oh, I'll play a wee bit of guitar. I'm playing an in walks Ian Donald with a double bass yeah. attached to his back. I've never seen anybody with a double bass. <laughs> and then he comes up, all right, guys, is it all right if I, I jam you? <laughs> No bother at all, get it set up, man. Yeah. Right? And he starts playing, and this guy's like, he, he, he's playing and he's spinning the thing around and that, and I'm just like, I don't know who this guy is, but I like him. Yeah, he's a, pr- <laughs> he's a proper throwback, and he? he's, uh, he's, he's an old soul, that's for sure. He's, he's some fella. 2023, you have been busy, right? So, the Ghost single came yeah. out 22nd of February. We of My Sins came out 27th of March. Again, the album. Yeah, so the Ghost is definitely <coughs> on the album. Um, Wait of My Sins has found its way onto the album. The, re- the only reason I released it so soon after The Ghost is that it wasn't a, a, I wasn't going to put it on the album and I'd written it and I thought it's a great song yep. but it doesn't quite fit with the album. Mm-hmm. So we, we recorded it in like a day um, and battered it straight out. And then just loved the sound. Of yeah, it. so it's ended up being on the album anyway. So. Tell us about um, see doing the music video for yeah. The Ghost. So you got the Red House and Donny Pace. How did that all come about? Did you just contact Angie and say listen, any chance I can use the pub when it's closed? Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Um, Who did you get? What about filming? So we used a guy called Simon Gillespie, who's a mate of Barry Frames. So right. he does, he's... Is that at the college? Uh, no, he's, no, so he's someone... I don't I don't know how Barry originally got to know him, but they've made um, a, a two or three full-length feature films together. Or I remember Barry saying that he, yeah. he kind of done sort of video stuff. Yeah, I know he does green he, screen and all that. Right, so he, yeah. He's kind of into that side and of he it. Did as well. all, so he did all the, the sound production on this. One of them was called The Last Love Letter. Mm-hmm. Um, Simon basically directed the film, acted in it. Barry acted in it a little bit as well. But yeah, um, and I think Barry's old man was in it as well. And they ended up renting one of the screens in Cineworld in Falkirk and getting all the friends. Yeah, and family. yeah, I remember him saying. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, so um, Barry put me on to Simon, um, and um, yeah, I basically sent in the track across and said, "This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'd like. I want something that kind of tells the story of the song and fo- follows the song yep. through." And then he came back to me with ideas. Um, he knew the Red Hoose anyway, so we said, "Yeah, oh, it's going to be perfect. It's got a proper old time kind of American yeah. feel to it." Inside. Uh, how so, long did it take to record? Three, three hours or something. Yeah, and. You've seen all that, but it's still in my head. It's the still the pub from still game. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I tell everybody it is. If anybody asks about what it, you should have done was just get somebody dressed up as like Winston. Yeah, just sitting in the back and limp, limping in. <laughs> Guns and Roses mm-hmm. recorded Chinese <laughs> Democracy, right? So that's that's right. Guns and Roses recorded Chinese Democracy. It took them eight years to record it. Yeah, they recorded over fifty songs. It exceeded thirteen million dollars to make, and it became the most expensive rock album ever produced. Has your new album beat it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was getting there. It was getting there. And Honest I, to God, I was like, I'm, I'm not joking. The, the four I've done four EPs in, in the last year, and every time I go over to Barry, Barry's house to get the files or, or whatever, I'll, I do say to him, "How's Scott's album coming along?" Yeah. And he's like. Mate, it, it, it's nearly done. Yeah. It's nearly done. And he's like, I was like, this is going to be a masterpiece. I was like, I was like, is this going to be? It's going to be like the Guns N' Roses one, but but more. So have you, have you paid Barry about thirteen million dollars? Definitely not. <laughs> no. Can, can, if, just in case the missus is watching this when it goes out, definitely not thirteen million dollars. <laughs> but uh, but it's done. But, but, so I it's seen you, you, you put a Facebook post up yesterday. Yeah. I think it was saying. Is that it completely done, mixed and mastered? Mixed and mastered, or, or yeah. In the process. When do you, are you planning on having it released? Uh, by the end of January, so. And um, we, we are of a, the older age, right? I'm very much into, like, see the young people now? I like that song, download it. Yeah. I'm, I'm still really into 
the artwork and everything mm-hmm. that goes along. I still think that's important, but yeah. I don't know if that's maybe just me or I'm no, a, a bit of a dinosaur. I don't think it is. I do think... you have, have you still got to do all that part of it? Uh, so that's getting done tomorrow. And you have ideas? Yeah, so that's that'll, that'll be all out of the way tomorrow and then I've got somebody sorting out the, the graphic side of it. Mm-hmm. So that should be done. And how are you going to just release it through like iTunes, Spotify, like that kind of thing? Or will you... Are you old school? Are you going to do like any? No, I'm going to have physical copies. Yeah, yeah. Because right? I'm like you said, I just, I just love. Because you can always take, you can always sell them out your guitar case at gigs. Yeah, that's the thing. Well. I mean, you know, I, I still, I do play quite a lot of originals gigs through in Glasgow. I play a lot for a promoter called Fallen Angels Club. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that put on a lot of Americana gigs, um, and people are always buying the CDs. So, well, I suppose how do you find the doing those gigs, doing your originals? Do you, do, you, uh, do you prefer it to the covers? Is it just different? It's, um, it's different. I do prefer it. I mean, I think if you from, get... From your own point of view, you're like, it's your own songs, I yeah, suppose. It's it a bit is. more interesting. And it tends to be... As much as a good covers gig is great, and if you've got loads of people up dancing and loads of people up singing, but it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's a brilliant atmosphere, but they're not them. necessarily listening. They just like the songs yeah. because they're a cover song. Yeah. yeah. Whereas... The majority of gigs I play, especially for the ones for Fallen Angels Club and stuff like that, the people are there to listen to every single word of every single yeah, song. They want to discover something new. Yeah. And if they and if you're playing and you know someone's getting into it, you're yeah. like, that's my actual song. Yeah. That, that's not a great song that somebody else has wrote that I'm just playing. Yeah. Because you could go and play a greatest hit set list, and you know it's going to go down well, mm-hmm. but you know you've not wrote a single yeah. bit of it. You're just entertaining. Or that. Yeah. So. Album will be out in January. Um, any more singles coming out, or do you think you're going to? That's going to be the next big release for yourself. No, that, that would definitely be the next big release, and then. Uh, what are you going to do after it then? Because are you going to do like, Chinese something, democracy too. Something like that. Something yeah. maybe sixteen years. <laughs> no, I think. Uh, I think we'll probably uh, need to start saving. I know. I'll probably be looking at a couple of EPs after that. I think. Yeah. I, I've got. I've got three or four blues songs that I would love to put out as a, as a blues EP with different lead guitarists on each track. What style would you say, you, if, so, if you had to, well you'll need to put your album in a, a category, yeah. what style would you put it as? I, mean, I class myself as Americana because that's the sort of people that I listen to so it's but, not, it's, it's it's country. There is a bit of, there it's, is definitely a country twang to yeah. it but there's like acoustic, there's a bit of indie, yeah. sometimes there's a bit of blues in there. Mm-hmm. So there is a nice mixture. Yeah. It's not just one thing. And I think that you know, if you if you've got an eclectic taste that you listen to yourself, that that tends to come through in in your songwriting as well. The last one, I'm going to start asking everybody this. You always hear it on other podcasts. So Mount Rushmore. Who would be your Mount Rushmore? Your four big musicians, bands that you songwriters, the four people that you just be like, these are just. Amazing, the per- okay. the perfect, the perfect. Uh, That's a great question. Four. I love that. So for me, it would one of them would be Charlie Parker, saxophonist. Okay. Um, the greatest alto sax player that's, that's ever lived. Yep. Um, Steve Marriott from the Small Faces. Yep. Otis Redding. Mhm. And Mill Haggard. That's great. Cause I, you know what? Every time I ask that, I, I'm getting a, a completely different answer. Yeah. It just shows you how much uh, everybody's influenced by different things and. We all kind of, we all play sort of relatively in the same area, we branch out, and I once I start kind of speaking to people for, further afield, mm-hmm. but it's great because you get four different answers every single time. Yeah, and it's, and especially when you know we're all playing, well, a lot of us are playing the the same pubs, doing the covers gigs and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and tending to play a lot of the same songs. Yeah, and, you know, you did the standard pub repertoire as we all know. Yep, but. It's great that you, the fact that when you ask that question, you're going to get so many different answers to what, when people are talking about what they actually listen to and yep. who inspires them. Right. Well, thank you for coming no along. At all, man. Thanks for having and, me. It's uh, been a pleasure. What we'll do is uh, we'll get this fired up and uh, I want a copy of this album. Right oh, before. definitely, <laughs> mate. Yeah. I'll pay you, though. You need to make back, make back that 30 <laughs> million that you spent. <laughs> yeah, Tracy will be counting them off. Uh,